All right, we got some transformers in. Uh, here's the output transformer, and here's the choke. And then here is the reverb transformer. Um, I have provisions right here uh, for the reverb transformer, which works out fine. Uh, that's how, if you ordered my chassis, um, you can use those. I ended up just quickly mounting them to the side. Um, as you see here, there was some room, so I just mounted over there. You can do it either way. Hopefully you do a better, straighter job than I did. Um, or you could just use these two, and they're, they'll perfectly align. Uh, the reason, the only reason why I do this is strictly cosmetic, is because the real number two, I didn't know this until a recent picture, the real number two had the, um, reverb driver transformer, just like that. So that's mainly why I did that. Again, please don't be disappointed. You can still use this. You'll have no problem. Uh, it's just, it's up to you. There's some room. You can do it. All right, so I went with the vintage mount. And the reason for that is if we look in here, see those, that right there? That's for, uh, in between there, um, that's the standoff for the power supply, okay? So you need the vintage, so there's some clearance there. So you can put the nut and then the standoff. Obviously do the nut and the standoff first and then put your transformer down. All right? For the power transformer, please be very careful, but you need to pry off the cover. All right? When you do that, you're going to see um, that there's these little uh, guides in here. Take those out, and then the cover will come off a lot easier. So just basically you take a flathead screwdriver. Uh, I'm not going to push this down again. But there is areas to where you can stick a flathead. So if you see there and off to the side, where you can stick a flathead screwdriver and just sort of rotate it to the side, and then you'll pop the cover off. All right? Because you're going to want that uh, cover off either, and that's how you're going to keep it. Dumble took the cover off on a few of his um, amps. I'm not quite sure. I've never seen the power supply section of number two. Um, but number four, he had these kept on. Number two, I'm not, again, not quite sure um, how he had his. Just be very careful when doing so because this paper could rip on the side. Uh, you're going to notice there's some weird sort of smell. kind of smells like fish. Uh, <laughs> that's just because this is vintage construction. If you go with the classic tone and they use some sort of lacquer, which is pretty close to the original. Again, just be very careful when you're taking that off. Using Seal String Singer number four as a guide here, I'm going to put the brown and the power input from the outlet and the actually the power on and off is going to run directly over there. You know, obviously just follow your diagrams for your voltages for whatever country you're in. And then this is your high, um, basically your, your high voltage line and your center tap as well as the uh, heater voltage coming out on this side. And then we'll just run it appropriately. Um, I don't have that vertical support installed yet on mine, but yours, if you have mine already, you're going to have your uh, rectifier right there. You're going to mount it on the side and run the wire straight there. So it's really nice and clean. You could go over, if you prefer, just run these wires in the top and sandwich this. It may look a little cleaner. Um, I might run mine without the top on it. Just leave it as is. So you have some choices, whatever you prefer cosmetically. All right, so here's another day's worth of progress. I'm going to combine a few different days of progress in this video. Um, and what I started working on is routing and, and cleaning up, tying down the wires, uh, the coax wires. You can see my sort of approach on how I'm doing that. This is a channel that's going to be in between the boards. So then I'm just going to take this um, and then just you know bring it up and in. I was a little bit on the fence. I wanted to do something really clean and have the boards come up from the bottom 
or have the coax coming from the bottom so you would never even see these wires but uh i'm gonna i think just route on the top just very neatly bend it over that way for troubleshooting i'll be able to see if there was a broke connection on here and i think that's my main advantage only for these coax in the back um, I think we're going to do it the coax in the front too. But as far as, you know, wirings, I started working on the runs. So I'm going to add the wire to the boards first. And then after I place the board down, then I'll finalize where these go. You notice that all these are the same color, uh, which is going to make things a little difficult for me. But that's sort of what I have to do. I use, I'm using silver tint stranded 20 gauge aerospace grade um, wire from Tube Depot. So, uh, you know, I'm just going to use that as my preamp wiring. It's going to be a little bit of half and half. So up here, you're going to see the preamp wiring up tucked there is not the silver. And that's all right. I'm just going to go this approach. So the idea is that once everything is down, I'm going to take some solid core wire, strip it back of course, and then feed it into this hole and then grab it using uh, needle nose pliers and then pull it in the rest of the way. At least that's what I'm thinking right now. Uh, we're gonna find out. Um, for, the, for the power transformer wiring, you can see my braiding. My approach on this is going to be, uh, here's the, the higher voltage line, I don't need that. But here's the 320, 0, 320 uh, line. It's going to go up to the side here for my rectifier board. So it's going to go there. These wires, I'm going to have for the AC coming in, I'm going to fly them over the top, I think, of everything. That way it's sort of spaced out. What I did here was I braided, or actually I just twisted the pairs and then I twisted the pair of the pairs together. And then that's going to come out and basically fan to go to each side. And then uh, this is going to go here and then, you know, continue that way. So, yeah, I think it's looking really clean. It's going to it's actually a lot cleaner than I expected it to be, because um, once I put the boards, I'm going to pretend like I'm populating it here. See the boards? I mean, you're barely going to see any of these wires, which is really cool. It's going to look really nice. Alright, so I'm in the middle of wiring up my heater wire. And this is my, the, I think, the easiest one I've ever done. And the only thing I changed was going from right to left. I normally go from left to right, and for whatever reason, um, you know, I'm just kind of going with the flow of the wires this way. And it's a lot easier. Most people think that uh, heating or wiring up the heaters is the most daunting task in the world. And I can understand that. I totally appreciate that. And, uh, you know, this was a breeze. So I got one more to go on this and, and we're cooking. Hopefully not in the way that is bad, but we are moving right along here with this build and I can almost feel getting closer. I'm really, really excited. I need some standoffs. Going to start with the rectifier. Um, got the holes drilled and everything. Going to do that tomorrow. I got the wrong side screws, of course. And this is what the project looks like as of right now. Literally right now. For the next five seconds. And then I'm going to finish up the heater wire.